In this video, we're going to investigate a particularly nice class of series called alternating series that have some kind of funky properties. So an alternating series loosely is just a series whose terms alternate between positive and negative, positive and negative. So we can sort of formally write this down as imagining that our series AN was really a alternating term minus 1 to the power of either n or n minus 1 times bn, where the bn's are going to be positive. So if you think of this, these an's being written as minus 1 to the n or minus 1 to the n minus 1 times the bn's, then what you get is it's a positive term, then a negative term, then a positive term, then a negative term, and so on. And so the question then is, okay, so if we have these alternating series, what then? What properties do we get for alternating series? If I demand that I have not just any alternating series that's going between positive and negatives, but an alternating series where the bn's are both decreasing and have limit zero, then I get the following property. I want you to imagine that I have the number line. Okay, I'm going to start here at zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my first term. So I'm going to go all the way over here, and this is S1. And, and what S1 sort of represents is a jump of an amount B1. And if I'm using N equals to 1 here, this is minus 1 to the 1 minus 1, so minus 1 to the 0, which is just 1. So A1 is B1, and the first partial sum is just A1, so indeed I have a gap of S1. Okay. So, so that's my first point is going to be occurring over here at S1. Now let me see what happens to S2. For S2, I am subtracting off a term. However, I'm subtracting off a term that is smaller than the B1. So in other words, I get to an S2, but my S2 is over here somewhere. Because my B2 is smaller than my B1, it doesn't go beyond zero. It subtracts off, but it's somewhere in this region. So I've got some... Uh, gap here, and this is going to be the B2. All right, so there's my second partial sum. What about my third partial sum? Okay, third partial sum, now I'm adding something positive. But again, I'm adding something positive, but it's not as big as the B2 because I have that my Bn's are going to be decreasing. And so I'm going to get a point over here, which is going to be my S3, and this is going to have a gap B3. And this process is going to keep on going. I'm going to come over here, 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 and I can go and write in my S4, my S5, my S6, my S7, and these are all going to start clustering. And somewhere in the middle of this, I'm going to have a point that I am going to refer to as S. That, I claim, is the sum from 1 to infinity of my ANs. So the idea of being sketched here, and this isn't a formal proof, but the, the sketch of the idea is that an alternating series, if it begins at zero, it keeps on adding and subtracting, adding and subtracting, adding and subtracting, and because my limit, because the limit of the BNs has to be zero, this alternating behavior is indeed going to converge on some value S. And so my claim is, if I have these different properties, then my series converges. So my formal statement is thus, if I have an alternating series, so one that can be written as minus 1 to the n minus 1 times bn, where my bn's are greater than 0, where I have this property that bn plus 1 is smaller than bn, this is another way of saying that my sequence is going to be decreasing. And if I have the property that the limit as n goes to infinity of the bn's equal to 0, then I'm going to get convergence. By the way, I want to compare this with the divergence test, a test that we've seen previously that said if the limit of the terms did not go to zero, then the series did not converge, or in other words, it diverged. But in the generic case, we notice that if the limit of the terms goes to zero, it may or may not be the case that you have convergence. We don't know. It was only that if the terms didn't go to zero that you guaranteed divergence. What we're doing here is we've got that property again. We've got that the limit of the BNs go to zero. So the terms are going to zero. The divergence test doesn't tell us that it converges yet, though, but the alternating series test, if I additionally have that it's alternating, and I additionally have that these BNs are decreasing, then those three properties together will ensure 
convergence. One of the three properties alone is not enough. All right, so here we have an example, and this is a sum of n is equal to zero to infinity minus one to the n times a bn, where my bn is equal to n divided by n squared plus one. So in order to apply the alternating series test to this, we have to verify that the different properties hold. Clearly, it's a minus one to the n times something, but there's conditions on that something. There's conditions on the b to the n. So first of all, I need to have the bn being greater than zero. Well, clearly this is the case. n's all positive, n squared is going to be positive, so clearly the bn's are going to be greater than zero. Additionally, I want to have them decreasing. Uh, one thing that I could do here is that if f of x is equal to x divided by x squared plus one, then if I was to take the derivative of x, this is going to be equal to, by the quotient rule, 2x squared plus 1 minus 2x times x, so minus 2x squared, all squared. That's just my quotient rule. So in other words, minus x squared plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1, all squared. And this is a value which is less than 0 when x is going to be anything bigger than 1. So this is less than 0 on 1 up to infinity, and so decreasing. Good. Uh, third property to check. I want to know that my limit is going to be 0. I want to know that the limit as n goes to infinity of my bn is equal to 0, and indeed this is the case. I have just n on the top I have n squared on the bottom. This is a rational function, and we know that such things are going to be going to zero if the denominator has a higher degree than the numerator. So one, two, three, we've got all three conditions for the alternating series test, and so it converges by the AST, or the alternating series test.